Today what I will do is that I will share with you our Pride and Joy. This is an actual application that the Salat has created with, of course, the engagement of ISRI. We have used lots of data that comes from the Salat as a telco, but we also use the technologies that ISRI is actually providing when it comes to the geospatial technologies that they have. So um, let me just take you through it. So, Again, this is City in Motion. It's an application, and it can have the capacity to digest pretty much all type of data that you may think of, whether it's actually telco data, that, data that comes from uh, the telcos, or data that comes from cameras, or data that comes from IoT, does not matter. We can have the capacity to be able to digest everything and create lots of insights from that perspective. The application itself has so much of use cases, but what we've done today is that we've concentrated on one of the use cases, which is what we call the population density. And in there, we actually uses, we use lots of uh, data that is coming from the, our CRM. And this data is pretty much your demographic data. This is related to gender, age group, nationality, and so on and so forth. But we also provide our uh, cellular data, or what we call sing uh, signaling data. This is whereby the uh, cell towers that you see on the road, so all of your mobility, all of the location, how people move, that's also another type of data that we also add and ingest in there. We also provide, uh, or we actually ingest as well, our data models that we have created related to the home location, the work location, from that perspective, it's a male, a female, based on the calling patterns. This is also another thing that we can be able to ingest into this uh, application, as well as we can also add into it the data packet uh, inception. This is pretty much your web browser behavior from that perspective. So we can be able to create different segmentation other than male, female, age group, and so on and so forth from that perspective. So all of that is actually digested into that application and we are showing the population density utilizing, again, as I stated, the technologies that is coming from ESRI in relation to the uh, geospatial um, technologies. Uh, in terms of, sorry, okay, here we go. So this is the infrastructure that we are having. So because it's a huge amount of data, we're actually crunching more than a one billion records on a daily basis. This is, by the way, this is a real, time stream data. So this is real, real data that it happens right now immediately. So this is a very hard, it pretty much is around one zettabyte to two zettabytes of data that we process on a daily basis from that perspective. But uh, we use this as Spark in order for us to be able to digest and be able to get and handle all of the live stream. We also use Hadoop and Hive in order for us to be able to, um, you know, uh, manipulate or actually do the requirements when it comes to that, the huge volume of data that we are actually crunching from that perspective. And again, we use ISRI as a GIS map in order for us to be able to put all of that data that we do in an actual interactive map so that people, whoever actually sits behind the tool, can be able to take decisions based on the data that they can be able to see. So what I will do now is that I will take you through an actual demo of the application. It's a video, it's not really uh, live uh, at, at this moment because it has, it's a heavy application, so that's why we actually did a video from there. But the two use cases that we're gonna be concentrating at is one related to tourism, the other one is related to uh, retail. And this is the, the beauty of this is that we are still using the same data attributes, the same data sets. We're not changing anything from that perspective but this is just to show you how you can be able to utilize the same data sets for different use cases that is completely different than each other from that perspective. So let me show you the video and I will take you through it uh, from there. All right, here we go. So um, what we do in here is that um, this is the UAE in all, and you can be able to see exactly what is the demographics that we are talking about in terms of nationality, gender, residents versus tourists, who is passing by and who is actually at their home at this uh, instant and who is at the work from that perspective. So this is the overall. We can have the capacity to be able to filter further if we would like to. And let me, uh, okay, so this is the filtration related to Dubai itself. 
and we can be able, again, this is for the whole Dubai in, in overall, and we can be able to filter further to go to a specific zone if we like to. So we can, for example, in here, we actually went into uh, Burj Khalifa, and the area or the idea in here is that if I am a tourist and I'm behind that tool, uh, a tourism authority, I would like to understand, for example, where the UK visitors that they come to Dubai is point of, uh, their point of interest is Burj Khalifa or not. And I can be able to geofence Burj Khalifa and try to understand if they are coming to that area or they're not coming to that area. And I can also compare, for example, visitors that is coming from India versus visitors that comes from the UK to be able to understand and correlate is Burj Khalifa is a considered to be a monument to which nationality or which visitors from that perspective. Why do I need this? Because as a tourist authority, it's very important for me to understand exactly my international campaign. If I'm going to be enhancing the tourism to Dubai, I need to actually make sure that my international campaigns holds the, mu the monuments or the point of interest that that particular nationality is interested at. The same thing is actually in relation to Dubai Mall. Dubai Mall, as, as me managing a mall, is very important for me to understand the footfall. And in here, I'm not talking about people who's coming into the mall itself. I'm talking about in terms of demographics. I'm talking about how long they stay in the mall. I am talking about how long do they have to travel to they get to the mall itself. Uh, is it a repeated visit? Is it a one unique visit? Do they come only at the weekends, at the weekday, for example, because the work location is very close to mine? So they come to have lunch and, and leave? All of that information, all of that analysis is actually there. And that, as me, as, as the mall manager, will make sure that this analysis, when I actually put it there, I'll be able to understand exactly how I should be able to target my customer. I should be able to know how I can be able to communicate with them based on what they're doing with me on a daily basis from that perspective. So this is the overall uh, demo that we are having. And as you can see, again, it's, it's pretty much the same data attributes that we are talking about, the same data set that we are talking about, but the way that we can be able to tweak it, the way that we can be able to analyze it, it will be different from one industry to another industry from that perspective. Such use case, it can actually touch points in different industries. So think about it like this. From a transport perspective, if I want to map my transport services versus the population density in the different times of the day, peak times, off peak times, so that I can be uh, more operation efficient, this is something that I would actually do and, and use. Otherwise, I will just dispatch taxis for taking of the dispatching taxis. Again, the same thing, if I'm in a tourist, uh, in the tourism uh, authority, it's very important for me to understand how I can be able to encourage the tourism within Dubai. And this such type of data, because I can be able to filter and know exactly who is coming to Dubai in that, in that regard, then I'll be able to know which point of interest I can be able to know with how their movement is happening, what is their uh, start journey, end journey, all of that information that I can be able to help me to create or to understand also the tourism movement. I can be able to uh, utilize it also from a safety perspective. So all of the events that you see, such type of an event, um, it's very important for me to be able to monitor the event, to make sure that there, the crowd within that event, for example, is unsafe. If there's any anomalies that has happened or abnormality that is happening within the event, I should be able to know. And this is, again, it goes back again to the public safety. From municipality perspective, uh, urban planning, uh, roads, bridges, how people move, this is very important for me in order for me to be able to understand exactly how I can be able to build the roads and bridges and be ready for my horizon year. The same thing when it comes to the retailer. Uh, I need to know my customer, I need to know to engage with them, and there is no better way than me geofencing these kind of uh, retail shops that I have and be able to understand who are my visitors uh, from that perspective. And with that note, I thank you so much.